I've had a little bit more time on this earth than most of you perhaps. Just a little bit more than maybe some of you mums and dads. And I've come to the conclusion that life is based around defining moments. Today you've had this amazing opportunity to be here, to listen to some great speakers. Has it been good? The bean bags look fantastic. I so wanted to kind of dive in there. They look just supersonic. Well, today you've had the chance to hear from some incredible people. And I wonder if for any of you it's been a defining moment. Whether you've heard something that's generated a new seed of excitement in your life. Whether you've listened to someone and you've thought, wow, that really resonates with me. I think I could do something like that. That might make a difference to me. Anyone? Has anyone had a thought like that today? You know, and this is what this day is all about. It's what TED represents. It's bringing great people together to hear great speakers talk about uniqueness, different ideas. And today I'd like to talk about one defining moment. Because as some of you have today had the opportunity to maybe go, wow, aha, that makes sense. So have a lot of other great people. And those moments have made the difference in their life. And not only the difference in their life, but the lives of hundreds and thousands and millions all around the globe. Take, for example, Olivia Newton-John. Now, most of us know her. The young ones in the audience would know her from Glee. The parents know her from wearing black tights and dancing around the stage with John Travolta. Someone like her is an amazing woman, and I'll tell you why. Because very much like you, she had an opportunity of going to a great school, and she came from a very academic family. So much so that her grandfather won the Nobel Prize for physics. So wow, they expected her to go on and do some really good things. Be really brainy, as we used to say. Be super bright. The only thing is, is that Olivia Newton-John actually loved to sing. She was really good at singing. She loved it. So she turned to her teacher one day and she said, you know what, I know I'm supposed to go on and do something over here, but what I really want to do is something over here. Should I follow my dream? And very fortunately, that teacher said to her, you should follow your dream, but make sure you're damn good at it. Because everyone expected her to be over here, and she wanted to go over there. The difference in that one moment for Olivia Newton-John changed her life forever. She told me that if she hadn't have taken that moment in time, that in actual fact, she would have never gone on to become the person she became. She would have never followed the career, and she would have never given so much hope and wonder to so many people around the world. And then some of you may know the fantastic Australian called Terry Irwin. Well, she was born in America, but now she's Australian. She's married to Steve, wildlife warriors. You know, on that tragic day here, just off the coast of Australia, when Steve perished at sea, Terry Irwin, a wife, a mother, a mother of two young children, had to decide one thing. Would she wallow in grief for the man she loved and lost? the father, the husband, her partner in life, her pea in her pod? Or would she, in fact, decide to take the mantle and follow Steve's legacy? She's now one of the biggest wildlife warriors in the world, a leading conservationist, not only in Australia, but right around the globe, making a difference for all of us, for our futures, for the place where we live. And then there's someone like Jane Fonda, the interesting thing is with defining moments, they don't always happen when you're 15 or 16 or 18 or 20. It may take almost a lifetime to find out who you really are, to hear that voice inside your head or your heart, something that makes you want to do something different. When Jane Fonda came out here to Australia to launch her book, she stood in front of thousands of people and she shared something totally from her heart. She said, it took me until I was 62 years of age to find out who I really was, where my destiny lay, what I was put on earth for. And so in my final chapter, I'm going to make the difference I was put on earth to do. And you think, wow, she stood there on stage beside me. And she made these comments to complete strangers. Because for her, she felt she had to resonate from her heart. She had to say something truly that would make a real difference. Does that make sense? You know, as girls mainly here today, as females, young and old, we sit here and we kind of think, you know, we've got a pretty good life here in Australia, don't we? 
I mean, you're on beanbags, a third of you. I mean, that's pretty good. You're getting to hear speakers, you're relaxing, you've had a great lunch break, you've listened to a band. Life is pretty good. I have to share something with you today. That you have the opportunity to become anyone, do anything you can put your dreams towards. When I was 14 years of age, I was given the remarkable opportunity of heading down to Canberra, to our national capital. I was one of the youngest young girls to go down to the first ever national youth conference in Australia. And I remember kind of sitting back there like some of you are today and looking at the women on stage. And there were very few female politicians then, very, very few. And as I sat back there, I thought, wow, they are making a difference. How grand are they? How strong are they to be standing there with all those men and doing something that is so important? And it really was a defining moment at 14 years of age for me. 31 years later, I was invited back to Canberra by a very special woman, the first ever female Governor General of Australia. And she invited me on the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day. Imagine, what an exciting, fantastic day. She invited me there to go and launch my book, Women's Words of Wisdom, Power and Passion. And in that book, I'd had the remarkable opportunity of interviewing and talking to and sharing, connecting with 50 iconic Australian women. And you know, on that day, people said to me, why did you decide to do this? I mean, we read magazines, we see stories on women, we hear about women, we know women are great. Why did you think it was so important? And I said, can I tell you one thing? We've surveyed around Australia in the last 20 years over 30,000 women. Girls, teenagers, young women, older women, grandmas. And do you know what they tell me? They tell me somewhere deep down inside them that they don't feel like they're so important. They don't feel like they count. Four out of five. It's a big number, isn't it? That they're maybe not good enough, that their legs are too chunky, that their breasts haven't grown the way they hoped, that that girl next to them looks better and is more beautiful and her hair is better and she got a better job and better grades at university and her parents are wealthier and life is better for them if it could only be me. Does that resonate with any of you? And not just the students, but adults as well. Because the interesting thing is when you leave school, you know what? It doesn't get sometimes better, it gets a whole lot more tricky. Because then you're in university and then you're in work and then you're trying to organise your lives. And the interesting thing is that as you get older, and even now, for many of you, you're one of those 85% of women who make all the consumer decisions in Australia. How's that? Everything that's bought, from motor cars to medical insurance to lipsticks to online magazines, is purchased by women, 85%. And so we're kind of important, huh? I think so. And I think today gives us an amazing opportunity to focus on a couple of things. And those things are how important young women are and where you're going for your future and what opportunities you have. And those are grand. And I'll tell you why they're grand and why they're important and why there's something I'm going to ask you to do and promise today. And that is to lead a bigger life. It is to fulfil the promise. And I'll tell you why. Because in Australia, women aren't as equal as men. And it's kind of a topic that we kind of don't really like to talk about and we kind of think, well, you know, it's a little bit tricky and we don't want to discuss it and we've got a job and life is great and we went through university. You know in going through university, there are more educated than women than men. Did you know by 2014 in Asia Pacific, in actual fact, there'll be more women more educated than men and there'll be more women making more decisions on purchasing power than even the 85%. And they'll be you because this is your future. And so in looking towards that future, how are you going to be? Because equality is a really big issue. And it's something that we owe ourselves to talk about. We owe ourselves to look at. We owe ourselves to discuss in our homes and on the sports fields and in our offices and around Australia. See, in 2010, there was a blueprint written in Australia for how we should increase equality. 2010, so some of you are in primary school then, some of you are in high school, some mums were just having young babies. That's only three years ago. And one of the key five issues that they brought up in actual fact was, is that women need to be moved, projected, increase their opportunities and grow into leadership positions. Does that make sense? We all get excited because we've got a female prime minister and we've got a female governor general. And yet at the same time around Australia, in actual fact, 
This week, the ABC News reported, three years after the blueprint was written, that there's only 12 in the top 100 ASIC listed companies in Australia with female CEOs. Only 12. And in five years and 10 years and 15 years and 20 years, this is going to be your opportunity and your future. So where do you see yourselves? The interesting thing is that technology is incredible. And I love it because it gives us almost all the results we want, doesn't it? Who looks up Google for everything except their homework? Yeah, exactly. Who has an iPhone 5 and a Suri? Ah, oh, yes, of course they do here in Southport, Australia. So, you know, you can ask Suri almost anything and she'll answer you. You can say, Suri, what are you wearing? And she'll say, I don't think you should ask me that. And you can say, Suri, what are you doing later tonight? Would you like to go out on a date? And she'll say, I'll be speaking with you later tonight. And then you can say, Suri, where should I bury a dead body? And she will say, would you like a ditch? Would you like a crematorium? Would you like a casket? And she gives you a list of 10 options. And when you actually say to her, Suri, are men and women equal, she will say, I don't understand the question. Maybe not in that type of voice, but a different voice. She says, I don't understand the question. So you say again, Suri, are men and women equal? And she says, wait one moment. And up comes a song by Simply Red called Men and Women. And I go, hang on, you can ask Suri what she wants to wear. You can ask her about dating. You can even say, Suri, should I take the red pill or the blue pill? And she'll say, either way, I'll still be here when you wake up. But in actual fact, when you ask her about whether you should actually, you know, where the equality lies, men and women, she gives you the name of a song. And I started thinking that the internet gives us a lot, right? We love it. So we're more connected now than ever before, right? You can connect with anyone. You can be whoever you want on the internet, particularly for young girls. You can be anyone you want. So we're more connected now than ever before. And yes, in so many ways, we're less connected now than ever before. Because we spend so much time doing this, and looking at this and focusing on this, that we're not actually doing this. We don't actually talk as much, we don't share as much, we don't communicate, and we don't have heart-to-heart -heart conversations. So it got to me thinking about young women and girls. And it got me to thinking about how can we make a change? Because we can tell you you should be leaders, and we can tell all the female leaders in Australia and around the world, they have to mentor you, and they have to support you, and I believe you've still got to be good to take the job on and that you need to feel that you're worthy and you need to feel that you're connected and that there's a future for you. Because you know what, there has to be. And I'll tell you why there has to be, particularly for girls, particularly for women, particularly for families, is the fact that when women hold the power, when women hold the power in their community, when they have better jobs and they have a bigger voice, they actually give a voice to things that matter. And that is community, it's health issues, it's education. And so therefore, it's really important to grow that voice. Does that make sense? That if we actually want to make a better world, we have to have a better voice. And we have to care more intrinsically back into our local community and our state and our nation. That makes sense, doesn't it? And in doing so, having the opportunity for women to speak louder and brighter and bolder, you know, the Governor General says that. She actually says women need to be proud of being bright, bold and brave. And I say, why be brave? She says, because Karen, our future has not come yet. There's still so much work to do. And the, of course, our own Prime Minister here in Australia, Julia Gillard, says something like, women need to believe they're equal. We need to believe we are the same as men. Not better, but the same. And that's how she gets through every day, is believing she is worthy of that role. So for young women, it got me to thinking, well, how can we kind of support you and nurture you and love you? and help you to become the amazing people that you're going to become. Because we need you. This is actually a plea for help today. It's a plea for us as our communities and our future and our hopes is for you to actually take a bolder role. Because if you don't, who will? Will it be your daughters at the dinner table talking about the position they'd like to get but they're too scared to go for the role? And so I kind of said, well, when I look at Google, it answers a whole lot of things. It really does. But there are some things I don't think it teaches our girls. And there are some things while we're so connected out there with the universe that we're actually not connected in within our own hearts. And there are some simple things that I think as a philosophy, we all, and men of course as well, boys, could very well learn for. And that is make your life something amazing. Dare to make a difference. Dare to choose an incredible role. Our next speaker today is in grade six. When you hear her story, you'll just be overwhelmed with what she's done. 
And the interesting thing is she said as a grade sixer, before we came out here, I said, I've heard you make movies. This is so fantastic. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm saying this to a grade sixer. I'm so excited to meet you. Maybe we could work together because we do movies and I'd love to chat to you about what you did. She said, you know, it's really the app. The app is what's good. And I said, no, it's not. The app is a pathway. You are what's extraordinary. And that's what girls tend to do. We kind of look at ourselves and say, you know, we're okay, but other things are better. Dare to make a difference, not only in your life, but in other people's lives. I hope that resonates with you this afternoon. And the next thing I think which is really critical is to be your best authentic you. I think we live in a time of extraordinary change where there's an opportunity to be whatever we want, do whatever we want. There's more opportunities now for women than ever before, and so there should be. So be the best you. Put your step forward and your best foot. When I talk to leaders, they say to me, Karen, the thing that made me stand out, that made me successful, that made me different, that made me achieve the, the world that, as I saw it and wanted it to be, is one pure thing. I was authentic in who I was. I actually stood for what I believed. I didn't try and be like someone else, someone in a magazine, someone I saw on TV or a TV show, or the girlfriend next door. I actually stood for who I was and I believed in me. And people saw that and it resonated. And that's what got me to where I wanted to go. The next thing is the power of heart-to-heart -heart connections. In this very busy world, it is so easy to do this and to do this. There is nothing, nothing more amazing than touching someone's heart. Be they a friend, be they a family member, be they someone through business or through work, or across the globe. But if you have the chance to make a heart-to-heart -heart connection, something that's real and something that's true, it will stand you in good stead to become the leaders we hope that you'll become in your future lives. The next one is a little bit tricky for girls. It's all about don't wait for Mr. Right. And I'll tell you why. Sheryl Sandberg, who's the COO of the amazing company called Facebook, has just launched an incredible book. And in that, she talks about if you're young women, go for it. Put your foot on the pedal and move forward as quick as you can. Take the opportunity. Take the job offer. Even if you don't think you're quite ready, you know what? If you ask a man if he's ready for a job, even if he can only do about 70%, sorry, boys in the audience, but even if he can do about 70%, he'll go, I'll take that. That'll be good. You ask a young girl or a lady or a mature woman, she'll say, I'm not sure about that. I would like to have all the information first. I'd like to be good enough in all those areas to move forward and to truly do the best of my ability. And that's where lies the difference. And not that difference is bad, difference is great. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to move forward. So don't wait for Mr. Right. Sure, who's a global entertainer, said something which I think is fantastic and resonates with some women. She says that men get all, all, women get all excited over nothing and then they marry him. And you know, the interesting thing is, is that sometimes here and there, is that we just think that's supposed to be what we're supposed to do. And for some women it is. And some home heroines are the best in the world. But for some women, opposed to waiting for that prince in shining armour to race along the beach on the Gold Coast, you never know, he could just be the tin man in disguise. So take a moment and think about you and be happy with yourself and your own career and your own path. And once you've done that, then you have the opportunity to find that person who is perfect for you. Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright. I think as well as that in life there's one opportunity for us all and that is not to live a little life. It's not to live small, it's to live big. It's to do something extraordinary. If it's in our own home, it's with our families, it's in our community, or it's perhaps even global. I ask you today to find your profound purpose. To look at what you would be great at. And you don't have to do it this year or next year. It may come to you like Jane Fonda in your older years. But if you find it early, you get to live a bigger life now, a more exciting life, a more rewarding life. So take a look at your worlds and say, when I think about my life, can it be profound? Can I make a difference? What can I do to honour myself, my family and my friends? Because I think in life, as women, we're blessed to be in Australia. We're blessed to have opportunities like this to share, unite and talk. And to talk about things that are really important for our hearts. But I think as young girls, young leaders and people also joining us today, 
is that we have a chance to do one thing and that's not to live a little life, is to do something that makes a difference for your heart and those of the hearts around you. And all it takes is you, one person to make one difference. If we all did that, if we're all kinder just for one day, if we're all kinder to people just for one day, what difference would that make around the world? Everyone we spoke to, everyone we emailed, everyone we didn't cyber bully, all our teachers at school, if we were kinder just for one day, would that have little ripples out to the universe? I think so. It only takes one person to make a difference. And today this is your opportunity for that person to be you. Thank you.